Today, using Apple Motion, we're gonna create a looping motion graphic background. I've been getting a ton of requests asking how to create the backdrops that I use in my videos. Now, I did not make those. Those were created by Premium VFX. They're an excellent, excellent plugin, so I'll have a link down below. It's an affiliate link, so thank you so much if you use that link. But I thought it'd be fun to take inspiration from their backgrounds and see if we could rebuild something like that in Apple Motion. First things first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can of course push Command, Option, and N. From there, today we're gonna actually select the Final Cut Generator. Then I recommend setting your duration to something like 10 seconds. Also, you can set your presets to whatever you like. Today we'll be working in 1080p at 2997. From there, we'll go ahead and push open. Now that we have the project browser open, go on to the left side and find your generators. And in here, we're gonna look up the gradient. We'll go ahead and just drag that into our project. Then we can go into the inspector settings and click on this down arrow so we get some more options for our gradient. In here, we can actually change the colors that are selected. So I'm gonna just go with some nice gray colors that are based off the color scheme in Final Cut Pro. So we'll just do this kind of lighter gray and maybe this darker gray, something in there, not lighter gray, might be a little bit too light, so maybe I'll do something a little bit darker than that. Then from there, we can find the start and end options here at the bottom and click and drag those to stretch out this gradient really nicely. Now I want this gradient to almost appear like it's got some nice motion to it, so we'll go on over to the left side and locate the start and end values. Let's go ahead and add keyframes to both of those. We'll go over to the middle of our timeline, which is five seconds in, and we'll just play around with the different values and see if we can get a look that we like. So I want this to kind of shift over almost to the middle or something like that. So now it's starting on that left side and slowly moving towards the middle. But because I want this to loop, I want it to ping pong back. Now we could of course go in and add in our own keyframes. That is definitely one way to do it. But what I prefer to do is actually tell motion to ping pong it for me. So let's go ahead and push command eight. And in here, you're gonna see all of your keyframe values. So what we're gonna do is select all of these different gradient values holding shift. Then we're gonna click on this down arrow that's kind of hidden. And then we're going to select after last keyframe for it to ping pong. So now this is telling motion that once that keyframe ends, for it to loop backwards and go back to its starting position. So now this is going to automatically loop everything for us. Let's go ahead and add a little texture to the gradient. So we'll go into the filter settings. We'll go down to stylize and select add noise. First, let's go ahead and check this monochrome box. So it's just black and white. Then let's drag the amount way down to something like 0 0.01. Then let's also disable auto animate. So we just want the texture there. We don't want it actually shifting around. Now this is still a little bit too intense for me, so let's play around with the different types. Currently it's set to white noise. I personally really like the Gaussian noise. I feel like it's a much softer looking noise and it just adds a really nice level of texture to our backdrop. So we now have this basic backdrop. Let's go ahead and add in some basic animated shapes. We are going to come down here to our rectangle, click on this down arrow and select the circle. We'll go ahead and create a nice large circle and this is totally up to you on how you want it to look. Then from there, we can go ahead and disable the outline and we can adjust the fill color. We could make it a light gray or something like that. Or you could of course go in and adjust the fill opacity, which is what I'm gonna do. And we'll just get it barely showing up in frame. Now let's go ahead and move this circle over to something like this side and I almost kind of want it to be breathing. With our circle selected, we'll go to our properties and find the scale factor. We'll click and add a keyframe. We'll go forward five seconds and add another keyframe and we'll scale this up to something like 120%. So now it's growing over time really nicely and slowly. And we still have our keyframe editor open with command eight. What I'm gonna do is click and drag both of these keyframes, right click and select ease both. Then if we go over to the left side, we can click on this down arrow, select after last keyframe and select ping pong. Now the next thing I wanna do is add some particles that are kind of flying back and forth. Now we could use the particle emitter, but I think it's gonna be a little better if we use the replicator to get this looping really nicely. So to do that, let's go ahead and select the circle tool again. And we'll just create a really tiny circle. I'm gonna hold shift so that it's perfectly symmetrical. Then we'll go into 
into our shape settings and disable the outline so that we just have this singular tiny circle. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and rename this to be the particle circle. Then we'll go up to the top right and select replicator. What that's gonna do is it's going to replicate that circle into this box shape, but I want these to be randomized. So we're gonna go over to the arrangement settings and change it from tile fill over to random fill. So now we have a few little stray circles happening within that box. We could of course change the amount of points that are there, but I actually really like just a few. There's five currently. Then we can also change the replicate seed so that if we wanna shift around where those are in space, we can shift them until they're looking how we want them. And I really like this current layout. Now I want these to animate back and forth again, almost like they're breathing. To do that, we'll go into our replicator, we'll go up to behaviors, and we're gonna go down to replicator sequence replicator. Using the sequence replicator, we can actually animate all of these. We're gonna change the sequencing from two over to from keyframes. And now what we can do is you see the source has been set as use source animation. That means that we can actually animate the original circle and the animation that we apply to that circle should apply to these smaller circles. Selecting that original particle circle, we'll go into the properties, we'll click and add a keyframe on our position, we'll move forward halfway to the center, and then we'll go ahead and drag this up at an angle. Now we can select all of those keyframes using Command A, right click and select Ease Both, then go to the left side, click this down arrow after last keyframe and ping pong. So now it should be moving back and forth for us. Now currently they're each moving individually by themselves, which could be something you want for a different type of backdrop, but we want them to kind of all flow together. So we'll go into the sequence settings, and we're gonna find this spread option. Go ahead and click and drag that spread up to 100. So now they should all move very subtly together, but there is still that slight separation. So some of them start to move before the others, which I really, really like. Going into our replicator settings, go to replicator. We can change stuff like the scale randomness so that they have a little bit of variation in their scale. We could also change the color mode and I would do something like pick from color range and then we'll go into our color range options and set the colors you want. So if you wanted a nice accent color or something like that, you could totally set this up. So I've set these up as an orange accent color, which I really like for this particular backdrop and it matches with my branding. Now that we have that nice animation set up, you could leave it just like this, but I wanna add one more element because I just think it'll tie everything together and that is bringing in a grid. So let's go ahead and go into our library. We'll go to our generator settings and we're gonna look up the grid. We'll drag that into our layers. We'll jump into the inspector. We'll change our line width down to one. Then we can drag up the BG width and BG height options. So we'll just click and drag directly on those till they're at 500. Then you'll notice that it's added this black to everything. And that is because the BG color is set to black. I'm just gonna use a blend mode to get rid of this. So we can go into our properties, change the blend mode from normal over to screen. So now it is just showing these white lines. Then we can go back to our generator settings and you'll notice there's this offset option. So we can actually click and drag on this offset to animate this grid but I wanna animate it so it's kind of going up at an angle and then dropping back down. We'll go into our offset options. We'll click and add a keyframe. We'll go up to the center of our timeline and then just animate these up how we want them, just like so. So now it's got this nice little animation. Then with our grid selected, we can click and drag over all of the keyframe options, right click, select ease both. Then we'll go over to the left, click this down arrow after last keyframe and ping pong. So now it's going to have this nice animation of the grid going up to the top right and then sliding back down to the bottom left. Now those white lines are a little bit too bright for my liking, so we'll go into the grid options and we'll change the line color. We can just go into this color wheel and then drag it down in the grays so that it's just very subtly there. So now we have this really nice looking dynamic backdrop that perfectly loops. There's just one last thing we need to do for Final Cut Pro before this will loop perfectly. So if we go to the very end of our project at nine seconds and 29 frames, we'll push Shift M. That's gonna create this marker. If you right click on that marker, you can select Edit Marker. Then you can go into the Type Settings and change it from Standard 
over to project loop end. So now this is going to tell Final Cut Pro that this is the end of the project and for it to loop it automatically for us. What this does is it maintains all the timing we've set up for all of these animations. So it won't speed them up super fast if we shorten down the generator or it won't stretch out the animation if we stretch out the generator. Now, if you wanted to add a lot of customizability for Final Cut Pro, you could go into the different options and publish the colors. So for example, I have this gradient, I'll select this darker gray color, then I can click on this down arrow and push publish. Then I can click on the darker of the gradients and publish that as well. We could go into our particle circle, click on the orange, publish that, and then publish the gray option there. Then of course we could publish that circle on the right side, so I'll publish the color of that. Now that we have all that set up, I'll go ahead and push Command S to save, and we'll just save this as a minimalist background, and you can put it in whatever category you like. You could create a whole new category. Now I have FCB's backgrounds here, and I'll push publish. So now all we need to do is load this up in Final Cut Pro, drag this background onto our timeline, and just like that, we've got this gorgeous looping background in Final Cut Pro. We can also jump into the generator settings and change the different colors here to whatever we like. So that is how you can create a minimalist backdrop in Apple Motion for Final Cut Pro. Hopefully this was helpful to you. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.